welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. about you, but sometimes the most difficult challenge that I face in my life is what goes on in my mind, my thought life. How many times have you read the Apostle Paul's admonition to think on things that are true, lovely, and of good report, and then walked away and later found yourself immersed in feelings of discouragement and defeat? Okay, I confess. You know, your thoughts produce feelings, and if we can gain control of our thoughts, we gain control of our feelings, including depression, discouragement, and anxiety. Kathy Mink and I have shared some really great things on these past three programs. We talked about overcoming inferiority and rejection. Yes. We talked about protecting your heart with a hedge of thorns. And now we're going to be talking about how to harness the power of your thoughts. And these three programs, we're calling them Powerful Principles for Mental and Emotional Health. And yes. it's God's will for us to live in mental emotional health. It is. And you've pointed out something to me that I had also been thinking about, and that is the mental and emotional agony that Jesus faced and how he dealt with it. Yes. And I'd like to, for you to share a little bit of that because I felt like that was important to know that, that he has experienced everything we have experienced only on a huge magnitude and that there's healing for us. That's right, Annette. And it's part of the great exchange. So amazing what he took for us, for us to be free of it. And we know that our keynote scripture is Isaiah 53, which we've covered. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, you know. And he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. grief. And he experienced and was rejected. He was despised and rejected yeah. of men. And the only perfect person ever to walk on the earth. Yes. And he was despised and rejected. So what does that tell you? Even if you're perfect, you're going to be despised and rejected by somebody at some time. That's right. So forget trying to be perfect. Yeah. That's not going yeah. to do it. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Well, then, you know, Isaiah's in the Old Testament, of course. Well, we come over to the New Testament. And in Luke 23, we don't have time to read the whole passage, but I would encourage you to read all of Luke 23, and you will see it in a new light when you think about the rejection and the despondency and the discouragement and the persecution that he took for you. And that it was purposeful, Annette. He planned it. He and the Father planned this from the foundation of the earth. It was mm -hmm. not an accident. So when he was arrested and he was taken before Pilate and Herod and then sent back to Pilate. Yeah. That was the leadership of that day. So he experienced total rejection from leadership in the world. That was the world leadership he was under. So that takes in your bosses, uh, government officials, political people, even and your pastors. Anyone you're under authority. Yes. So that took in that category. He experienced total rejection from them. Pilate didn't want to reject him, but he was pressured in. Yeah, <laughs> well, right. Yeah. <clears throat> then he took on rejection from his peers. Well, I had never thought of this until I studied this, this passage, but the Pharisees who rejected him as well, the religious yeah. leaders, that's why if your church leadership hurts your feelings or rejects you, Jesus already paid for it. You can get over it. <laughs> you can get over it and you don't have to leave the church. And forgive by faith, right? Forgive by faith, yeah. yes. But yeah. uh, you say, devil, I'm already on to that one. That's not going to get me. But the crowd that the Pharisees brought when he was before Pilate on the feast day, they had whipped them up to ask for Barabbas. Now, you know who was in that crowd? These were people that were his peers. I believe, Annette, there were people in that crowd that he had healed 
Well, that's entirely possible yes. and probable. Very probable because yeah. masses followed him everywhere and yeah. he healed them all. So here was a crowd of his peers and Pilate gave them a chance to ask for Jesus' freedom and they picked Barabbas instead, mm -hmm. even though Jesus was innocent. So he yeah. was rejected by his peers. Yes. And then the final one, and this is in Luke and Matthew, um, but the final one was when in Matthew, talking about the crucifixion, Jesus cried out, Father, Father, why have thou, hast thou forsaken me? So because the Father could not look on sin and he had become sin, carrying it all, including rejection, yes. insecurity and all of that, he felt rejected by his Father. Yes, says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah, and so yeah. that covers our Heavenly Father, God, for every person, if they're the biggest sinner, murderer, pervert on the face of the earth, they don't have to be rejected by God the Father. Think about it. <clears throat> you can be rejected by all kinds of people. Yes. But you are not rejected by God ever. God That's right. I don't care what you've done, what you think you've done. I don't care what blame game, guilt game you're playing. God has not rejected you. You may have rejected yourself, but God has not rejected you. That's so powerful, Kathy. It really is. And the only sin that can keep you out of heaven is the sin of unbelief. Just refusing to believe. Just refusing to believe that... That Jesus did it. Yeah. That He did what He did. Yes. Isn't that great, though? Yes, it's just... The vilest sinner, if he just believes, his Father embraces him and he'll spend eternity with him. Yes. It's like, you know, the prodigal son. Yes. Such a perfect picture. He came back expecting only to be treated as a servant, and yet he was embraced. Yes. And then God embraces all of us, regardless of our sins, regardless of the fact that we're not perfect. And we don't compare ourselves with others. If we do, we get in a bad spot. That's right. You know, but God accepts us totally as we are right now. I've heard people say, and I know you have too, said, well, when I quit smoking and drinking and get my life right, I'll get back to God. That's like trying to stitch yourself up before you go to the hospital to That's, get help. Yeah. <laughs> God is the, the one who heals and delivers. He's the one that helps you, not turns you away. Yes. So the thinking, Kathy, the, the thinking that's been so twisted and distorted and turned backwards. You know, people read this about Jesus' sufferings and they say, see, Jesus suffered, so I've got to suffer. That is so distorted and so wrong. So backwards. Jesus suffered all of these things so that we could be saved and delivered. That's yes. why he's called the Savior and the Messiah. He yes. didn't endure these things so that we can suffer too. No, and it wasn't an accident. It was on purpose yes. that he took it. And bore it all. Well, how could how could that happen? How could that doesn't make any sense? It doesn't have to make any sense. It's um, it's a, a legal thing. Sin had been committed, and yes. a price had to be paid. It was a legal situation, and Jesus was ready to make the sacrifice to settle the legal debt. And the legal debt was not just for who committed sins 5,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago or yesterday. The sacrifice covered sin for all time forward. Yes. It's already forgiven. For us and for everyone in the future. Now that's the kind of thinking we need to have is to think that when something bad happens, well, I wonder why God did, did that. God didn't do it. That's he the didn't. biggest lie that's ever been told is that God is doing evil and making people sick. That's the biggest lie that's ever been told. That's right. God is the deliverer and He sets us free. And on the way to the crucifixion to pay for all our sins, He had purpose of even taking emotional rejection and hurt and insecurity. I heard somebody, yes. Annette, call uh, insecurity the curse of humanity. Yes. And I believe it is. Yes. And I did a study 
on confidence because I was going to preach a message on how important it is to be bold and confident. And after 15 minutes, I realized that all confidence is, is faith. Yes. <laughs> faith in this word. That is so true. And faith that Jesus took the emotional curse. But you know, part of that curse, if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, which starts with the blessings, praise God for that. Yes. But it ends up with, if you don't do what God has said, then here are the curses. And have you read those curses? It's not oh, my favorite thing to do. I hate it. But those curses are mental and emotional as well as physical and material. There are mental curses that said you will have such horrible things happen to you that you will be driven mad, crazy because of what you've seen. Yes, and Jesus redeemed us from the curse. He redeemed us. We're the head, not the tail. And the Lord brought to me before the program today, Annette, uh, Luke 145 and Luke 138. Luke 145 is when Mary and Martha were prophesying to each other when she was pregnant with Jesus. And, and the prophecy said, there shall be a performance mm -hmm. of the things told you. Yeah. Well, there shall be a performance or a manifestation or a result of the things we're studying in the Word yes. today. And if somebody is watching and you, you feel so low you, you can't even think of a scripture to quote, then just say what Mary said in Luke 1 38. Be it unto me according to thy word. According to thy word. Yeah, just, just if you have to choke that out. Yeah. Be it unto me, Lord, according to thy word. That is and all so this power, is powerful. And let's go back and talk about this for just a minute. Feelings bad, good, whatever. Feelings are come as a result of what you think. That is, that is the most important point. It's like a choo-choo train. This is the way I like to put it, a choo-choo train. You have the engine and it pulls and you have, have you ever noticed you see a, a train going down a, a track and the engine, wherever the engine goes, the, the cars follow, they don't pass it up. They just follow along. And I compare the engine to your thoughts and the cars are your feelings. That's good. Wherever your mind goes, your feelings are sure to follow. So if you're thinking about everybody's rejected you and everything's bad in your life, then your feelings are gonna be horrible. Yes. And this is why I, I suffered from depression for a long time, on and off. and. The Lord began to teach me about this and he showed me that if I got to where I was feeling depressed, mm -hmm. feeling discouraged, feeling defeated, feeling depressed, that I asked myself right then, when did this start? You traced it back. I traced it. I started following the train, tracing it back, <laughs> you know. When did I start to feel this way? Well, let's see. I felt pretty good this morning and then at noon I started getting depressed and I started feeling bad and, and then I this, that, and other. Well, what happened at noon? What were you thinking about at noon? Oh, I got a phone call and somebody told me, it could have been anything, somebody could have told me that we're, uh, our budget is short for the month, uh -huh. you know, that, that we're not in the black, we're in the red. It could have been that somebody called and told me that somebody I knew had said something, done something, whatever. And then I go back and I go, okay, so what did I think when I heard that news? Well, I thought, oh my gosh, if it was about the budget, I go, oh my gosh, we're not gonna have enough money. We're not, you know. What are we gonna do? What if, what if? No, 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 no. So then I'd go back and I'd look at it and I'd go, yeah, what if so much money comes in next month that we're able to give abundantly to all kinds of charities? So. That's just a short excerpt of how the Lord taught me. If I am feeling depressed and defeated, go back, find out when it started, and find out what I was thinking. Even if you have to go back to the caboose. E even <laughs> if I have to go back, I've been, I've been depressed a week, then go back a week. Go back as far as it takes you to find out what your thoughts were, what your thought pattern is, because the mind is the battleground. Yes. Imagine 
the battleground in Jesus' mind when he endured Gethsemane, knowing what was going to happen, knowing he was going to be separated from his father. Yes, that's what he dreaded. It was a battleground. And we've talked about 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It tells us, this is how we do it, okay? It says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical, but they are mighty before God for the pulling down or overthrowing and destruction of strongholds. Then 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, casting down what, devils, demons, and evil spirits? Is that what that said? No. No. That's what people act like. That's what they act like? No. It says, casting down reasonings. Where are reasonings? Where does that happen? Imaginations, mind says. It happens up here. Casting down reasonings, imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It's not talking about devils exalting themselves against the knowledge. It's talking about your thoughts exalting themselves against higher than the Word of God. Yes. How dare they? How (laughs) dare they? (laughs) So, here is what we're told. If the mind is the battleground, Jesus has accomplished this for us. It tells us we have control of our thoughts. This tells us, Paul tells us we have control of our thoughts. That we can get a hold of them, change them, and decide to believe God's Word instead of believe the outward circumstances, the things that our self-talk has been telling us. We have to remember that term self-talk because that's where it comes from, even above what people say to us. Yes, because you know what people say to us is not going to even lodge in our spiritual production center unless we believe it. That's right. Unless we haven't been telling ourselves already, well, I don't know if I can do this or not because, you know, I don't have the education and I don't have the training and I'm, I don't look as good as Kathy Mink and, and I just don't think I can do it. Are you really telling yourself that? Are you really telling yourself these things? We need to tell ourselves to shut up. <laughs> 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 in our thought life, in yeah. ours. And yeah. people, Annette, people think that this is too big an order, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Yes. But it can't be. It's got to be easy because the Lord told us we could do it. Yeah. Yeah. If He said it. In fact, it's not even toilsome. Yes. Well, and we know what the parameters are, Kathy, because it says in Philippians 4 8, think upon the things that are true. Okay, let, let's just take this for an example real quick. We're running out of time. Mm. Okay, is it true? Okay, is this really true? Because one of the things that used to be told me by myself and by the enemy and by, you know, is that, you know, nobody, nobody cares about me, nobody loves me, nobody <laughs> this, nobody that. All right, let's just examine that for one moment. Is it true that nobody loves me? No. Oh, well, number one, God loves me, but then I think my mom kind of likes me and my dad, you know. I love uh, you. And, well, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> but uh, you have to ask yourself, is this true? Because that's is the first th- thing. Because think what on jumps, things that are true. Yeah, because what happens is you jump off on something bad happened. Somebody said something to you. Maybe they don't love you, you know, and something bad happened. So then you, it, it's a pattern of distorted thinking that says, Everybody hates me. Mm -hmm. Everything goes wrong in my life. Everything I do is wrong. It's wild. It's raw. It's untrue. It is. Is it? Has your mind ever told you, well, you know, you just can't do anything right? Mm Mm-hmm. Has your parents? I didn't like that. You just can't do anything right. Okay. So let's see if this is true. Let's see, I, when I was a little kid, I was taught to tie my shoes, you know, lean down, tie them on, you know, and I learned it pretty quick. And so, can I tie my shoes properly? Yes. Okay, so that's one thing I can do right. So the whole statement was untrue. That's right. Now see, this is how you have to reason with your own mind, is you have to go and ask it questions, is this really true or not? Because most things we're telling ourselves and that people, 
tell us to put us down or reject us are untrue. That's right, Annette, and something that happens in the church, if you go on with that scripture, Philippians 4, 8, true, lovely, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, which means things that are praiseworthy. Well, that cuts out a lot of uh, prayer requests. <laughs> Boy, doesn't it? I'm telling you. And I've gotten to the place where I just speak the word, the strongest yes. word I can find about someone's condition, unless the Lord gives me more to say, yes. that they are healed by the stripes of Jesus and I commit them to you, Lord, and praise him for it, and then I don't touch it with my thought life anymore. Well. And there you go again. It's your thought life. Thoughts have power. Your thoughts have power to put you under or put you over. Your thoughts have the power to depress you or lift you up. Thoughts produce feelings, which produce actions, and they eventually produce beliefs. Yes. So if you continue to think about something, you will eventually believe it, especially if you start saying it. Isn't that right? So, That's right. So there's patterns. The thoughts will come, they will create if you allow them to. That's why, again, the heart, your spiritual production center, you wanna be careful what goes in there and gain control of your thoughts. Yes. Now, the Lord showed me uh, a way to pray to break totally free from rejection. Then it has to be followed up by everything you've said day to day, week to week. Every day. And it is this, and I would like to lead those of you watching in these prayers right now. Yes. If you would repeat them after me, and Annette, if you would take their part and say it. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, in Jesus' name. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. I repent. I repent. For receiving rejection. For receiving rejection. I ask you, Lord. I ask you, Lord. To cleanse out every root of it. To cleanse out every root of it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I receive that forgiveness. I receive that forgiveness. And I forgive all and I forgive all who have rejected me. Who have rejected me. I release the force of forgiveness. I release the force of forgiveness. To my parents. To my parents. My children. My children. My family. My family. My spouse. My spouse. The workers that I work with. The workers that I work with. My teachers. My teachers. All those in authority over me. All those in authority over me. And over, and release it to my friends as well. And I release it to my friends as well. I'm free. I am free. I'm free in Jesus' name. I'm free in Jesus' name. Praise God. See, those prayers, Annette, bring the blood of Jesus on the scene to go down to the root, which is the most powerful force in the universe. Yes, yes. So God's, God's word works on our behalf when we speak it out and release yes. it. When we pray the word, you see, that was praying the word. That wasn't praying the problem. Right. So don't turn around after you've prayed this prayer and go, oh God, everybody hates me. No. You've got to do something about this. He's already done something about it. Yes. He's already done something about it. You've prayed, so now you act and walk in faith. Let your locomotive front car. <laughs> You're the engineer. Get on the track of faith and control your emotions through your thoughts. Through your thought life. Absolutely. There's lots of thought patterns that, that come against us, Kathy. There's a, a just all or nothing thinking, you know, everything's bad or every, all, everything's good or, you know, I mean, it's, the all or nothing thing. There's a reading between the lines mm -hmm. where somebody can say something totally innocuous to you and you go, oh, I think I know what they meant. They really don't like me. They don't. Mind reading Mind negative. Mind reading. Negative. And then there's the what ifs. What if this happens? What if that happens? You know, if this happened in my life before, it'll happen again. You know, this is how people make judgments about things. That no, no, no. We say no to those sort of no. things. And that's what you say. Say to yourself, shut up. That's right. Stop it. Wow, this has been good. Kathy, 
thank you so much for being on this program. It's been I mean, a it, joy. These three programs have been absolutely wonderful and going to bring deliverance to so many people. Yes. I appreciate your insight and your strong stand on the word. Thank you, you. are a blessing. Thank okay, you. so I have two important products to offer today that I will believe will give you some very practical wisdom. I have a two CD uh, teaching series that I recorded in a church setting called How to Harness the Power of Your Thoughts. It contains almost two hours of techniques that I have used personally to rise above depression, fear, and inferiority. This teaching will help you change your patterns and habits of distorted thinking and emotions. And then, I like this one too, it's called Bringing Anxiety Captive. So many people are overwhelmed with anxiety and worry today, and this humorous and anointed CD will set you on the right path to peace. You know, I listened to it recently, and I was blessed myself. It's the word. It's, <laughs> it's the word. You. Call 877-396-9400. Ask for offer 2281. And that's the two CD series, How to Harness the Power of Your Thoughts, plus the single CD, bringing anxiety captive. I want those. Amen, $23 plus <laughs> shipping and handling. Kathy's my first sale. That's right. Okay, I want you to know that our staff at Caps Ministries prays for you and every package that goes out of our office is prayed over that the anointing of God will flow from these books and CDs into your home and touch and change your life and the life of your family. We make these offers available to you because we believe in the power of the Word to change lives, change situations, and change circumstances. If you've been helped by this series that Kathy and I have done, we have a DVD called Powerful Principles for Mental and Emotional Health, and all three of the programs Good. are available on this single DVD for $20. Overcoming Rejection and inferiority, if you missed it, you better order it. Protecting your heart and setting new boundaries. Get and one for a show. friend. Yes, and today's show, How to Harness the Power of Your Thoughts. You've got a friend that needs this stuff. Yes. Offer 1805 $20 plus shipping and handling. It's a single DVD with all three programs. I'm so excited. This has been a great time of sharing the word on what I really believe is a much neglected area. You know, God's provided healing for our mental and emotional life as well as our physical bodies. And I believe God's power is healing you now. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.